Hi. I'm very happy to be here. Um, you know, we say we have no natural resources apart from our people and our creative wealth, as Shakira has, has told us. But we do have natural resources. We have coral reefs. And the fact that they happen to be submerged shouldn't matter. But you know, we say the sea has no back door. And if we don't see it, we don't really pay attention to it. But I'm going to stop talking about corals for a bit. And I'm going to talk about sugar. So you remember back in the day, our wealth, our monetary wealth derived from sugar. And we got sugar from sugar cane, and we took care of our industry, right? Everywhere you went, you saw sugar fields, the sugar factories, the people. We had a slogan, sugar is king. And with the demise of the sugar industry, tourism took its place. Again, we knew tourism is our business. Let's play our part. Y'all remember that? And we, we took care of our tourism industry, right? But we didn't realize at that time that one of the pillars of our tourism industry was actually a coral reef. So because we didn't know, we didn't see it, we didn't touch it, feel it, hardly, we didn't have a slogan for corals, and I take personal offense at that. I was thinking, corals are cool, it doesn't have the same ring to it. So we need to come up with a slogan for corals. And we are not recognizing the wealth of corals, we're not recognizing their value. So come and take a little dive with me, and let's see what they have to offer. So we're going to go into the ecosystem services of coral reefs. So ecosystem services are values to us, are benefits to us from the ecosystem. And one of the first things is the reef fishery. And so many livelihoods depend on fish. And the only reason the fish are here, the reef fish are here, is because of the coral reef. You know, we have these beautiful, clear, clean waters. They're also very non-productive. They're very barren. And within that, you have this wonderful oasis of corals that provide a home and provide shelter for fish and lots of livelihoods. Pharmaceuticals, the amount of biodiversity on a coral reef, the amount of genetic diversity on a coral reef has resulted in coral reefs being called the medicine chest of the 21st century. So many medicines have been found in coral reefs from cancer, labor, so many, and so many more to be found. Aesthetics and recreation, and I'm gonna link this to tourism. Um, you know, for tourism, we say tourists come here for sea, sand, and sun. And the sand is actually generated by coral reefs. And it also anchors, the reefs also anchor the um, sand in position. And I'm going to tell you a little bit more about that later. But our tourism industry, as we spoke about before, is firmly rooted, firmly grounded in our coral reefs. And shoreline protection, I'm going to spend a little bit of time on this one because our reefs protect our lives. So if you imagine, you look at the rolling waves over on the east coast of Barbados, you look at the power and the intensity, and that power is being minimized due to the coral reefs that surround our island. We have corals everywhere except off of Scotland District. Can you imagine the intensity and force of those waves coming in if they weren't being minimized by coral reefs? So coral reefs save lives. They save property, and they protect our beaches. And, you know, it's a, a relatively new discipline called resource economics. And in this, what we're trying to do is we're trying to put a dollar value on reefs. Now, for tree huggers like me or coral huggers like me, it sounds wrong. You know, you could never possibly value all of the complexities and beauty of a coral reef. It just cannot be done. But it's not for me. It's not for tree huggers. It's for policymakers. It's for other people who need to have a dollar sign on a resource in order to value it. So resource economics is born. And there are a number of studies. I'm going to go through some very quickly for you. In St. Lucia in 2005, World Resources Institute did resource um, uh, economic valuation on three ecosystem services. The reef fishery, that was valued at 0.5 million. These are all US dollars. Shoreline protection was valued at $25 million. And tourism was valued at $160 million. So that has come a bit closer to home. And I just wanted to show you I was not lying. We have corals everywhere except around the Scotland district. Um, in the David Gill study, he looked at three coastal communities and ecosystem services benefits, what the value of it is to them. Uh, we looked at reef fisheries. And this is a really nice image because it shows you that the reef fishery is not only the fishermen who catch a fish, it's the people in the market who clean it and those who sell it. It's a whole livelihood. This was valued for the three coastal communities at 150,000. And dive tourism, which accounts for about 12% of our tourists, 
was valued at one million. That's three coastal communities. What was not valued is shoreline protection. And this isn't a value valuation study. I'm going to go through our costs. So I work for Coastal Zone Management Unit, and we've been busy doing coastal protection structures around the island for quite a few years. And if you look at the image on the left, those are bright waters, the little um, ovals in yellow. And what they're doing is they're dissipating, they're minimizing wave energy, what we spoke about earlier, something reefs are doing free of charge. And the little picture in the corner shows me what it looks like, some very strategically placed, strategically modeled rocks. And these shoreline protection values, well, the shoreline protection was valued at over $30 million. And these are all of the shoreline protection structures, studies that we've done. If you think about it, that's about 7.1% of our coastline, right? And that is, we've spent over $30 million already. This is something that the REITs were doing free of charge. And some of the things that we did not value, what, what is the value of a smile? What, you know, that feeling you get when you get on the beach and the sand is between your toes. You know, you put on a mask and you look at a reef. What, what, what is the value of that? It seems wrong to even try. Um, the existence value, the fact that the reef is here and it should be here. A legacy value that we pass it on to our children, the ecosystem services and benefits. These, these are things that's a bit more difficult to value, um, but people are trying. But our reefs are deteriorating, and they have been for a while. And this graph is just showing you that over the period of about a decade, the number of corals we have has declined by about half. Why? A number of reasons. This is a global one. Increase in carbon dioxide levels. As they increase, it gets hotter. Corals get stressed and suffer from coral bleaching. Um, increase acidity in the ocean, which is bad news for all calcareous organisms. Increase intensity and frequency of storms and hurricanes and sea level rise. These are just some of them, but as a small island developing state, we can't do very much about increasing levels of carbon dioxide by ourselves. This will take a global effort. Um, this is local. This is the invasive lionfish, which can have a really, really bad impact on our reefs, and we're seeing it now, and we're trying to deal with it. And land-based sources of marine pollution. Barbados is, is a coral island, essentially. Anything on land is going to end up in the sea. Right? And bad news for corals is the amount of nutrients that we generate on land. And nutrients is usually a good word. Here it's not so much a good word. What it's doing is it fer it's fertilizing the ocean and it's encouraging the growth of algae. And algae outcompetes corals at every stage of their development. It acts as a reservoir for pathogens and outright it kills corals. It's not good news. Yeah? So land based sources of marine pollution and an unsustainable fishery. If you take too many fish away from the reef, you're going to upset that balance. We're going to talk about that a bit later. If you take the baby fish away that have not had a chance to reproduce, then we have a decline in fishery. And it's not only those of us who like fish, but the livelihoods of so many people are being impacted as a result of this. So take a situation where, and all these images are Barbadian reefs. You have a beautiful coral reef like this one. And you add nutrients to it, and algae grows. And if you have parrotfish, and I love parrotfish, parrotfish taste great, but they're herbivores and they feed on the algae, right? If you have them, it's not so bad, but if you take too many away, you're going to end up with an ecosystem that looks like this. Now, there's no way that this is giving you the ecosystem services that that first beautiful reef did, right? You have to agree with me on that one, yeah? So I don't want to leave you with that. Let's have some pretty pictures. Let's have some pretty pictures. But just imagine that somebody put a treasure chest on the end of a cliff, a precipice, and it was in danger of falling off. We would all be running and trying to grab it and trying to save it and trying to protect it, right? Corals are our treasures. If hoteliers knew that value, maybe they wouldn't put raw sewage in the sea from their hotels. If farmers knew it, maybe they wouldn't spray um, pesticides and herbicides as well abandoned. If homeowners knew it, we would always choose to put a septic tank instead of a suck well. If boat captains knew it, they wouldn't drop anchors on reefs. If divers knew it, they wouldn't break off a little piece and say it makes a nice souvenir. Yeah? But we can come up with our own solutions. We don't have to wait on the government to do it. Once it's important to us, we will find our solutions. So, take an example of a chicken farmer. 
And most of the nutrients in our ocean, a lot of them, come from chicken poop. So just see a situation where the chicken farmer understands all these issues, and he says, okay, I'm going to sell the poop to the farmers. And the farmers take it and they use it. They do organic farming, which means better human health, better ecosystem services, better ecosystem health, and we're all happy, right? We will come up with solutions. Corals are our treasures. And it's not only scientists and ecologists that are, are excited about corals. Artists are also. And I want to end with um, a bit of poetry from Professor Kamau Brathwaite. And he grew up in Carlisle Bay, and he was awed by all the diversity in the bay. And he was also dismayed at its loss. We still have beautiful reefs in Barbados, by the way. You need to go and look at them. But this poem, one wonders where and how and when a young poet grieving up or celebrating out today will find real growing green in our 166 square miles of coral stone and stand, if we don't stop soon, stop soon, step soon, to save what we have left, to take back, if we can, some of what we lost, spoiled or despoiled, before it is too late. And happy diving. I know you're going to come diving with me. I know you're inspired. Thank you.